How can you tell if a baby is having a seizure? Well, honestly, a lot of times you probably can't. There are a lot of movements that babies make, whether they're normal or abnormal, which are really difficult to differentiate from an actual seizure. But there are a few questions that you can answer which would make it more or less likely that the baby is actually having a seizure. And just as a quick aside, if your baby is having abnormal movements, then remember to just video the movements. If you're living in 1890, this is how they video. Video the movements so that you can show your physician later. Hello, I'm Dr. Tala, and I've been a neonatologist for 17 years now, and I've taken care of a lot of babies that are having seizures and a lot of babies that haven't. So let's go ahead and get started. Right, so these are the four questions you need to consider when you see an abnormal movement and you're trying to determine whether it's a seizure or not. One, is the baby home or otherwise healthy? So is the baby tolerating feeds and having good amounts of wet diapers and having normal periods of being active and alert and wanting to eat? So acting like a normal baby. If that's the case, then most likely it's not a seizure. Above 85% of seizures in neonates are provoked, which means that there's something abnormal going on in the brain acutely, which is causing the seizure to happen. So for example, this could be if the baby lacked oxygen during delivery, or the baby has a stroke in its brain, or an infection of the brain, so a meningitis or an encephalitis. It could also be if the baby had a bleed in its brain, or there are some like metabolic abnormalities like low glucose or low calcium. All of these diagnoses could cause a seizure, but the baby would not be otherwise looking healthy if the baby had any of these diagnoses. More rarely, a baby could have epilepsy, which is defined as having at least two unprovoked seizures. Most of the time, this is due to some genetic or structural abnormality in the brain. But again, even with epilepsy, especially in the neonatal period, most likely the baby would have other abnormalities. If there was really something that structurally abnormal with the brain, then it's highly probable that the baby is going to have other abnormal neurological movements as well. Two, does the abnormal movement come out of the blue or can it be stimulated? A seizure, like you all know, is when there is abnormal electrical activity in the brain. And a seizure will start if the baby is just lying there, even if there's been no change in the baby's environment or the baby itself. Whereas non-seizure movements are usually stimulated by something. For example, jitteriness, that like high frequency tremor that we sometimes see in normal babies, as well as if babies do have metabolic abnormalities, jitteriness can be initiated or stimulated by just unswaddling the baby. So you unwrap the baby's feet and then you start noticing the jitteriness in the feet. The startle reflex or Moreau is a primitive reflex which happens when a baby is stimulated by something, for example, like a really loud noise or the feeling of falling as well. After the stimulus, the baby will extend its arms and legs, throw its head back, cry, and then bring back its arms and legs again, so retract them again. And it's something that we actually test for in healthy babies. We like to see a good symmetrical Moreau, but it can be really scary for parents to see. As always, though, it is stimulated by something. Babies aren't just lying in bed doing the startle reflex by themselves. Three, can you stop the abnormal movements? This is something that we really use in the neonatal intensive care unit to differentiate between a movement that's a seizure and one that isn't. Usually, if it's not a seizure, then when we hold the baby's extremity or we swaddle the baby, that abnormal, abnormal movement will stop. Sometimes a baby may have little twitches or abnormal eye movements. Again, a loud noise, a clap, shouting out the baby's name will stop these if it is not a seizure. Whereas more likely, if a baby is actually having a seizure, holding the extremity, if it is like a clonic seizure, or swaddling the baby or shouting out the baby's name, is very unlikely to actually stop the seizure. Four, what is the rest of the baby doing during the seizure? Often, seizures are associated with abnormal functioning of the rest of the body. So, for example, if a baby is having an abnormal movement and it also seems to be affecting their breathing, so they have stopped breathing or they are breathing more infrequently, then that is a lot more concerning than that really is a seizure.
during a true seizure, we would also worry that the baby is getting enough oxygen. So if a baby is not getting enough oxygen, one of the easiest ways to tell that is that the baby's mouth and lips start to go kind of a bluish color. If you're seeing that in association with an abnormal movement, that is much more concerning for it to be a seizure. So basically, if the abnormal movement is not affecting the rest of the body in any way, most specifically the breathing and the blueness and everything, then you can feel a lot better about this not being a seizure. Okay, that was four ways to differentiate a seizure from a non-seizure. If you want more information on this topic, then go watch our other videos on neonatal seizures. If you reached this far, then please like this video and consider subscribing to our channel if you are interested in neonatal education. Thanks for being here.